What's going on, everyone? Glad to be back. Welcome back as well. Folks, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to jump right into this video about 3i Atlas. Now, I know a lot of you guys heard a lot of hoopla or watched every kind of video possible about this. So we're going to jump in this. We're going to just touch on it a little bit. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. And then, of course, I want to see your thoughts. I want to see the comments down below. Let's just jump right into it. So where is 3i Atlas now? As of early November 2025, 3i Atlas is behind the sun from Earth's perspective, making it temporarily invisible. It is currently on an escape trajectory from our solar system after passing perihelion, closest point to the sun. On October 29, 2025, the comet is projected to appear on the other side of the sun and become visible to ground-based telescopes again in December. Okay, current position. 3i Atlas is located on the opposite side of the sun from Earth. Observability it is currently invisible to ground-based telescope, but expected to appear in December. So here we go, folks. We're already, what, almost halfway into November. So uh, you know, we'll just see what transpires out of that. Trajectory. The comet is on a hyperbolic path, meaning it will not return to our solar system and will continue its journey into interstellar space, right? Future location. After December, it will continue its path, passing Jupiter in March 2026 before heading back into interstellar space. Okay. Now, we all heard of Avi Loeb, Avi Loeb, depending on how you want to pronounce his name. Um, you can see this right here. It says, stacking images from the MassCam Z camera on the Perseverance rover on Mars shows a faint smudge where 3i Atlas was expected to be in, in the Martian day. So you can see it right here, right in the middle of the screen, right there. And you can see right here, it says, in a new interview on Newsmax last night, I discussed the seven anomalies of the interstellar object 3i Atlas. A segment was shared with Representative Tim Burchett, a member of the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability. Following this interview, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy at the White House, Stephen Miller, discussed in a separate news segment the U.S. government shutdown and was asked during his interview whether the U.S. President was briefed about 3i Atlas. So far, no data from human-made Mars orbiters was publicly released by NASA or ESA, also known as European Space Agency. In a subsequent podcast interview with Brian Keating, I mentioned anecdotally that the astrophotographer, Simeon, I guess his name is, stacked publicly available images from the MassCam Z camera on board NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars and reported a faint smudge at a location where 3i Atlas was expected to appear on the Martian sky or in the Martian sky, right? Yesterday, October 3rd, 2025, was a special day as 3i Atlas reached its closest approach to Mars at a separation of 29 million kilometers. This should have allowed multiple Mars orbiters to capture new imaging and spectroscopic data on 3i Atlas as follows. And of course, it goes into high resolution, talking about the high-rise camera on the uh, MRO, or the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. It says it should have taken images with a spatial resolution of 30 kilometers per pixel, the highest yet for 3i Atlas. The brightest pixel in these images can be used to infer the diameter of the nucleus of 3i Atlas, currently expected to be larger than 5 kilometers, as inferred here. And this is what A.V. Loeb's argument has been. Because of the shutdown, we have seen no photos from NASA or ESA, meaning all just about all of these orbiters were purposely faced out into space instead of looking at Mars to get a glimpse at this this comet, right? Nothing. Zero. So now they went to, like he's talking about uh, Tim Burchett, what they're trying to do is get, you know, trying to push these guys to say, hey, tell them to release this. We need to have some better uh, information about this comet. So that's in progress, right? And, and they're saying that the government opens up, they will share these. My feelings, and this is just me, is that they're going to do everything they can to doctor up or make some photos not available to the public, or they're going to doctor them up, like I said, right? So are we surprised? I will be happy if they do not. And maybe we can look into the photos a little deeper and see something that may not be seen or shouldn't be seen. We'll just go with that, right? Okay. Of course, this is talking about new photo of interstellar comet. 3i Atlas reveal its tail growing before our eyes. This is what kind of ticked me off. Every time I've seen a video of 3i Atlas, it's getting bigger. Oh my God, it's changing direction. Listen, stop. First of all, they tricked you into thinking, oh, my God, this thing's actually getting larger. No, it was just a tail. As it gets closer to the sun, it's going to grow along a tail because of the now expanding inside this comet. It's now jets of ice and other 
compounds that it's made up of. And then, of course, you've got, you know, these people say, oh, you don't understand, man. It's actually, it's it's shifting direction. It's changing direction on its own. It's getting closer to the sun. So, therefore, it has outgassing. It's going to have a tendency to push it in different directions. This is going to happen. This will happen to any comet that comes close to the sun, right? They were saying that they had the long tail plus a frontal jet, which it was like, okay, that's a little weird, you know. Yes, it's as it's getting closer to the sun, it just happens to have an opening in the face of this thing. So it's outgassing in the front of it too. Now, it has changed colors. But again, it's, it's got to do with the composition of what's being shredded off this thing and from the inside of it. And you see right under here, it says Image Credit International Gemini Observatory. So that's pretty cool. And you can see the photo there. And you can see right here, Comet 3i Atlas Multimedia, right? NASA missions are working together to track and study this rare interstellar comet as it passes through our solar system. Find images in other media sources here, right? You see Atlas Survey Telescope, first image. Uh, you can see it's got a GIF as well. We got the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Telescope. We got Sphere X, um, all looking at this thing. Now, they're looking at different wavelengths, kind of like what they were expecting the orbiters of Mars to do, right? Look at it at different wavelengths. So, you know, regular photography, infrared, so on and so forth. Because they want to try to get as much information off this rock as possible, right? And you would think with the Hubble and the James Webb, they should get extraordinary close-up photos of this thing. If you can see how, like, almost to the beginning of time, you ought to be able to see this thing pretty well. Now, it may be just a glow like you see here in the Hubble Space Telescope right here, in the middle, almost in the middle of the screen right there. You should be able to see it pretty well, right? Uh, you can see right here with its near-infrared spectrograph instrument on the James Webb. You can see that. They're trying to figure out if this thing's anything else other than, guess what, a comet. So I can understand them doing that. Then we had photos like this. This is from the Mars Perseverance, Assault 1643. And you see NASA's Mars Perseverance rover acquired this image using its onboard left navigation camera or the NavCam. The camera is located high on the rover's mast and aids in driving, right? And then it says the image was acquired on October 4th, 2025 at a local mean solar time of 21 hours and 33 minutes and 39 seconds. So there you go, right? It says image credit, NASA JPL Caltech. Now, to me, these two are complete garbage. They show nothing. This is nothing but a farce. If I was going to believe any photo would be this one, only because it's supposed to be highly reflective. Now, that could be iron ore. That could be some kind of metal that it's made out of. Now, some people think, oh, metal, it's reflective. It's got to be a spacecraft. Does that mean that? We don't know, right? And I'll give you my thoughts in a minute. But to me, these two photos from there, I didn't expect to see too much. you got to remember the rover's on the ground, and it's looking, trying to look and in, in pair into space, you know, and looking at this thing. There is no atmosphere, basically almost none. So there shouldn't be any, you know, blockage from atmospheric conditions. You shouldn't have any of that, right? This picture here, complete trash. This is not real. I've seen people, like, talk about this particular photo and this one here. Uh, you know, a lot of the public's go, oh, yeah, did you see this? Did you see this? It's trash. There's no way. The reason why I say it's trash is there's nothing there. You don't even see a, a basically a blur behind it, like a tail. You don't see anything else, and especially in this one here. This is supposed to be the darkness of space. You don't see anything else. You don't see any bright light. You don't see it like a... Like they like say, like it's like a like water droplet shape. I don't see that. So I don't believe these photos at all. I think they're complete trash. And you see, again, we've got these photos here. we got a GIF here. Animation shows the observations of Comet 3i Atlas when it was discovered in July 1st, 2025. The NASA-funded Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile first reported that the comet originated from, from interstellar space. Now, if you remember, uh, Avi Loeb said, or Avi Loeb, said it came from where? where the wow signal uh, of originally came from. So he's thinking maybe some kind of probe. Is that possible? I'm sure anything's possible, right? Again, my thoughts coming up. Now, we have this animation right here. Now, this is what's kind of crazy. It's going to start over again, and it's going to come close to Mars. You can see it right here. Earth being way over here. Here's 3i Atlas. This thing is nowhere near Earth. Not going to come next to Earth. Not even going to be a threat, Okay. We've got the Secrets of the Universe page here on Facebook. 3i Atlas, the third known interstellar comet, is about to reemerge from behind the sun, bringing new data and new questions. 
In just four months, 3i Atlas has rewritten the rules on what we expect from comets. Again, something new, a new comet, something that's different outgassing, different colors, so on and so forth, right? Discovered on July 1st, 2025 by the Atlas Survey in Chile, this fast-moving visitor crosses into the inner solar system with an eccentricity of about 6.1 and a velocity near 57 kilometers per second. Clear signatures of interstellar origin. When closest to the sun, 1.36 astronomical units, around 203 million kilometers, 3i Atlas will still remain a safe 1.8 astronomical units from Earth. Astronomers worldwide have tracked this comet using the Paramia, Paloma, and Apache Point Observatories. High-resolution images reveal a dust cloud in a small icy core estimated mostly under 1 kilometer wide, similar to known solar system comets, yet its redder color hints at unique composition. So there you go, right? Similar to known solar system comets, yet its redder color hints at unique composition. Right, what it's made out of. That's all they're saying. What truly sets 3i Atlas apart is a blend of familiar and bizarre. From an unusual red hue to mysterious tail dynamics, and chemical signatures never before detected in natural comets. Its hyperbolic path means it will leave our solar system forever. But before it goes, its up-close encounter with the sun may teach us more about the chemistry and birthplaces of planetary systems far beyond our own. All right, folks, here's my thoughts. One, A.V. Loeb, like I said, I like the guy. Harvard, guys, he's no dummy, right? I listen to him quite a bit. Here's my problem with him. Just because the comet has a different composition and it's unlike anything, or almost un unlike anything we've seen, he makes the assumption that it's a spacecraft. Now, let's suppose that it is. Okay, now what? Now, he seems to think, and I've heard this you know, more than a few times, the analogy that he uses is like if you were walking alone and seen a, a small anthill, you wouldn't think nothing about stepping on it and, and just keep walking, right? He's thinking they're going to act the same way. What is with the people with Hollywood attitudes like like um, uh, Independence Day kind of thing that we're all going to get killed off? To me, if they were coming to this planet, one, it would have to be something they can breathe, the atmosphere, right? That's number one. Number two, why would we be a threat to them if their technology is much greater than ours, right? We're barely learning how to even become spacefaring, let alone, you know, be a threat to anybody else, right? Three, why wouldn't they just come right out of hyperspace and just show up on a doorstep and say, by the way, hello, or we're about to eradicate you. Come on. So I don't see this thing as a threat. And even if it was some kind of space probe, which would be really cool, to be honest with you guys, I'd love to see that. It literally is taking pictures. It's getting to know us, so on. And then it just continues on. It's not like we don't do it. We're doing to almost every planet in our solar system. The only difference is they're doing it from a, a different solar system into our solar system, right? Okay. So how long did it take it to get here? So even if they were to, let's say it goes back and it sends information back, for them to send some kind of weird spacecraft to annihilate us, again, sci-fi, you and I will be long gone before this happens. I don't think I'd sweat it. But again, going back, I don't believe it's a threat. I think it's a simple rock. The difference is it has a different composition. It has changed direction. People are, oh, my God. The closer it gets to sun, or maybe a planetary body is having an influence on its direction. Very good possibility. This happens. It gets closer to the sun. It starts to outgas in different ports or different holes of it. So, therefore, it's doing this. And the closer it gets to the sun, it starts to eject out of every hole in it, and, and, and it stabilizes. This is the reason why they've seen it change, and then all of a sudden it's straightened out, and now it's in uh, perihelion. So um, once it gets out, which is in December, we'll be able to study the heck out of it, and we'll know better, right? So bottom line, folks, I see it as a different comet. I like it. It's awesome. If it's a probe, so be it. Doesn't mean it's of evil purposes. So my whole point, yeah, don't believe the hype. Me personally, do I think it's cool? Yes, like I said earlier. Different composition, so it's throwing off different colors. Okay. So it's a little bit different than the, than the other two comets that have come through our solar system. We had a Mora Mora, and what was the other one? I don't remember the off, the off the top of my head. Both Mora Mora and this one is equally strange, and I get that. Mora Mora was even weirder because it didn't even have a tail. 
That, to me, makes more sense. And that is the one I would question more than I would question 3i Atlas. Anyway, folks, that is my take on it. Throw your comments down below. I want to hear your take, especially after being gone so long. I want to hear your thoughts on what you think it is. Do you think Avi Loeb or Avi Loeb uh, is correct? Do you think it's, do you have your own views at what it could be? Is it nothing more than a comment? Again, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Got more videos coming up. In fact, they got one coming up from Mars. It's just weird. The terrain, you can see where they try to hide some things. Uh, is this just natural landscape or is it something else? Of course, you folks will always be the judge. Anyway, thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it, and it helps the algorithm of the channel. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.